Welcome back to Purple Collar Life. In today's video, we're gonna do a quick run through of how to start up and operate your John Deere X300 machine. Now, maybe this is your first hydrostatic tractor or you bought a used 300 that's new to you. In either case, this video should help you out with understanding how to start it up, run it, and we'll even give a little bit of a review of what we think of the X300 so far. Now, if you're not aware, the X300 series were made in the early 2000s between the years of 2006 and 2013. These tractors were only available at John Deere dealerships. These are not the same as the John Deere tractors you might find at a Home Depot, Lowe's, Tractor Supply. These are only available at dealerships and I believe the quality is significantly better in these dealership John Deere tractors. A couple basics about the machine here. This is your fuel fill. I recommend using only ethanol free gasoline. It's got a nice wide spout here and easy to fill. Underneath the hood, this is where you want to check your oil level before you start. Right here is the dipstick. You can just unscrew it, take a look at where your oil is on that dipstick. You can also check the condition of the oil. This is also where your oil filter is when it's time to change the oil. And down here is your oil drain. It's a nice, easy, toolless twist off. Here at the back of the machine is your fuel level indicator. You'll see here, you can see through that tank kind of and see where the fuel level is. It does have markings on it for a third of a tank, half a tank, and three quarters of a tank. This is also where you would hook a trailer if you were towing a little utility trailer around. And in the event you ever had to push this, you should never push a hydrostatic tractor without first releasing the transmission, which is this lever right here. It shows you to pull out and that releases the transmission to move it by hand. One of the things you wanna do before you start mowing is adjust this deck height level. So you can see you can turn this knob to any level you want as low as about an inch and as high as about four inches. There's an indicator here. I'm gonna set us, I like to mow my grass a little higher. I'll set us at about three and a half inches or let's go three inches just for demonstration purposes. To raise and lower the deck, you're using this pedal and this lever right here, this is the lock. So this is locking us up in place. Normally the deck would just be like that. You raise it by pushing your foot down, lift this up to lock it in the up position. So that's your deck adjustment. On this side of the machine is your brake and your forward and reverse hydrostatic pedals. So this is your brake pedal. This is your forward and this is your reverse. And there are some controls up here that go alongside with those other controls. Let me explain those. So looking here at the driver's console on the right hand side, we've got these switches and levers. This bottom one that's orange is our parking brake. So you'll see, push the brake, lift up on this, parking brake is engaged. You have to release the parking brake in order to push your hydrostatic pedals, reverse and forward. While you're mowing, if you decide you like that speed, you wanna use cruise control, you've got your pedal pushed at the right speed, lift up on this lever. That's gonna hold you at that speed for cruise control. And then the last thing you need to see on this side is your PTO electronic clutch engage. So while you're running and you're ready to start mowing, you throttle up, lift up, and that'll engage the PTO and start the mower deck spinning. The other thing you need to notice about this switch is you need to lift up on it when you push the reverse pedal to keep mowing in reverse. Otherwise, as soon as you push the reverse pedal, the mower deck will stop. So again, if you're mowing forward, you wanna back up, lift up on this lever, then push your reverse pedal. Also over here is your start key and your lights. First click is lights, and you'll see that also turns on the display of hours. We are at 418.6. Second position is run. Third position is start. You do have to have the parking brake on in order to start this tractor. And the PTO must be turned off. It's a very quiet machine. That's one of the things we really like about the X300. High quality Kawasaki engine in this tractor. On this side of the control, you'll see our throttle. So here's low, here's high. And this one beside it is the choke. You use this when it's cold, you need to start it. You just push this up. You'd see that would choke us out while we're running. 
I always recommend when you're mowing, mow at full throttle. Okay, now I'd like to give you a shot of these hydrostatic pedals in action. If you've never had a hydrostatic pedal tractor before, this will be different for, for you. You've had a clutch tractor, for example, or a tractor with the hydrostatic up here on the dash. So we've got our parking brake engaged right here. We are going to give ourselves some throttle. We're warmed up, so we don't really need to choke it. To disengage the brake, you need to push the brake, push this lever down. Now our brake is disengaged and we can travel. You can see just pushing the forward lever, the further you push it, the faster you go. Same thing in reverse. Push a little tiny bit to go very slow, push harder to go faster. So forward, reverse. Steering is just the same as in your car. And again, this is your brake pedal. A lot of times with the hydrostatic tractor, you don't really need to brake that often unless you're going downhill because when you let off the hydrostatic gearing, it slows down automatically. Now let me show you the mower deck function here. You're going to see this lever right here is the PTO engaged. Like I said, I like to put the RPMs all the way up. Engage the PTO. We'll have to have the parking brake off to be mowing. Engage the PTO. And then drive and mow. You could see how that shut off. As soon as I push the backwards pedal, the reverse pedal, let me show you how to do that properly. PTO engage. If I want to back up, lift up on this lever right here, and then push the reverse pedal. and lock that parking brake back on, throttle back down. This seat is adjustable using this lever. You can just push it in and slide the seat forward or backwards. When you're running, there is a safety switch here on the seat, so you do need to be sitting on the seat to be moving and mowing. Okay, we'll go ahead and disengage our parking brake. I'm gonna lower the mower deck. I'm using this left-hand foot, push the pedal down, Lower the deck, remember we're set at about three inches. Throttle up. PTO engaged. Mowing. If I do need to back up, just lift up on the handle. Mow in reverse. Always look behind you to make sure there's no one or nothing behind you. This has very tight turning. You can see right there how sharp this turns. It's a really nice tractor. Go ahead and turn our PTO off. Turn our parking brake on. To lift up the hood, you just lift right here from the center. The whole side panel comes up with the hood. And here is that John Deere iTorque power system, which is a Kawasaki 17 horsepower engine. Again, oil filter, oil drain, your air filters right here in the front, easy to get to, easy to maintain. And here's your 12 volt battery. Let's take a look at that impressive turning radius once again. Disengage our parking brake. Very sharp turns. This does have a nice and smooth transmission, both forward and reverse. Like I said, it's super quiet, which is impressive. Nice that you're lifting the deck up with your foot and not your arm. Huge fuel fill back here. You don't have to lift the hood up to put gas in it. Easy on gas. It doesn't, doesn't use a whole lot of gas to mow a particular area. It does have a cup holder here. This deck has the 42 inch edge deck, has a pretty nice mill for a 42 inch deck. I always think that the wider decks mill a little bit better, but for a 42 inch deck, this does a nice job. And that height adjustment leveling gauge is just about the easiest you can use. It's very descriptive, easy to just turn that knob and select the height you want to be at. Previously, I did a video comparing this John Deere X300 with a Kubota machine and our Toro Time Cutter Zero Turn Mower. If you're interested in that video, I'll put the link up above. 
We say a lot of detailed information about the John Deere X300 in that video from noise to cut quality to deck quality to mowing speed to the seat comfort. All that is included in that video, so I'll put that link up above. But I will say, this is a very well-built tractor, the X300. Of the newer generations of tractors, this kind of gives me that old quality feel that you would have had in the older John Deere's and the Cub Cadets. Now this isn't a garden tractor, this is a lawn tractor, so it won't do all those same things that those tractors of old used to do. But for its generation, the X300 is a very good machine. Thanks for watching. If you found this video informative and entertaining, we'd appreciate it if you give us a big thumbs up down below. Leave those comments down below if you own an X300 or something in the X3 or X5 series. They're all very similar. What you think of your experiences so far with your John Deere machine. So far, this one has been excellent for us. Thanks for watching. We'll see you again the next time.